Hi, I'm the Global Runner, and I'm just not prepared to get old quietly. So I've always been a runner. I've won a couple of races and I've lost a lot more. And I've got a lifetime best in the marathon of 226. But during COVID, I stopped racing like everyone else and I just didn't seem to take it up again. And then this year I turned 50 and I found myself faced with the prospect of just slowly getting slower year by year. But I wasn't ready to do that and I missed the competition and I missed really pushing myself against the watch. So I set myself a pretty aggressive target which was to go sub 230 by the end of the year and I've been calling this sub 150 at 50 or breaking 2.5. But I knew I couldn't just launch into a sub two and a half hour effort so the first step was to go under 240 and I tried that at the Mesa Marathon in February and I failed. I did a 248 and I was really unhappy and I wasn't sure if I was doing the right thing. But what I did was I went away and I trained harder and I got fitter and I got some good sessions in. And so the next attempt was at the Carmel Marathon, which was only eight weeks after the Mesa Marathon. And I was pleased I got myself fit and recovered in that time. And in Carmel, I ran well. I finally got the race together. I got the race I wanted and I ran a 238. So that put me well within striking range of the 2.30 marathon, and this is how I plan to achieve that. So I'm wearing my Carmel Marathon t-shirt just to prove that I did it, and I wanted to go over very quickly some key takeaways that I took from that race. Now obviously I was really happy with how it went, and I was really happy with how I paced it in particular. So I went through 10k in 20th place, I went through halfway in 19th place, so, you know, holding my position there. 20th mile, I went through in 14th place, so I was picking up a little bit. And then at the end, it says I finished 7th, I think that means 10th. But either way, I was progressing my way through the field throughout the race. And that's obviously what you want to do. You want, don't want the other way around where you've been spat out the back of a group. And by the end, I finished in 10th place. And I picked most of those up in the last six miles, so the last 10K. And of course, that's where the marathon really takes off. So one of the things that I'm really happy with is the manner in which I paced it. And one of the key takeaways I had was, I mean, everyone talks about pacing all the time, but it, it's not really got anything to do with pace. It's more to do with the fact of how you feel. And I know Alex Hutchison, I think it is, talks about perceived effort. So I knew the pace that I wanted and I knew I was operating within that pace, but I was really looking at my heart rate more than I usually would and making sure that that stayed under control. And I think that really helped me with the effort and feeling reasonable, certainly all the way through the race and coming up to the end. Now that's not to say that I didn't get tired and my quads got really sore towards the end. And that may be something that I need to pick up on. And the key to a marathon obviously is patience and making sure that you let the marathon come to you uh, rather than you trying to force the marathon. And so that's really what I was focusing on was not worrying about how far there is to go, but just worrying about letting the marathon happen, let it come to me and continue to operate right to the end. So that was one of the key takeaways. In terms of keys to success, I think there's several. I think the first thing that I've done in this training block, which really helped, was the double threshold runs. Um, I hadn't tried that before, but I think they are key, and I think they really help me. Um, particularly when you're getting older, you worry about recovery, and so it is sometimes good to make a hard day really hard so then you can properly recover from it. But I, equally, I found that um, with the double threshold runs, I wasn't killing myself in training sessions, which is a good thing. I think we, as runners, we tend to push ourselves right to that limit. But when you're doing another session later that day, you tend to do it at sort of 90, 95%. So when you do two at 90, 95%, that's a much better day. So I will be continuing with double thresholds. The other thing is the long run. And I did some over distance runs, and I think that was the right thing to do. I know they're very controversial, but I really do appreciate them. But another thing that I was doing that I'm going to have to focus on in particular in this training block is the marathon pace run. And of course, marathon pace has all of a sudden become very scary. If you look at my pace 
for the marathon I just did. That's 602 a mile, which is what, 345 a kilometer. Uh, in order to run 230 marathon, you have to run 542 a mile, uh, which is night and day. That is a level up in every sense. Mm. And then a final key to success of this race was the little things. I really did focus on making sure that I was stronger, making sure that I was doing flexibility exercises, making sure that I was doing a strength routine. Because again, as I'm getting older, I wanna make sure that there are no imbalances. So I wasn't going overboard on them, but I really did make sure that I was diligent in making my body as strong as it could be to withstand all this mileage. I do follow a vague a training plan. It's in this book. I read this book a number of years ago and it, I really enjoyed it. It's You uh, Only Faster by Greg McMillan and in the back he has some marathon training schedules. I don't stick to this religiously or diligently but I do use this as the basis for my training. So this is a great book. I'd highly recommend it. This is my copy. I'm not being asked to promote this in any way. Um, but I really enjoyed this and I found that the marathon training plans in here in particular have really helped me. So what do I need to improve? Well, clearly I need to get faster. And like I just said, 602 is a world away from 542. So what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to be going away and focusing on sort of increased speed and more recovery. So sort of train more like a 5K, 10K half marathon runner with a view to getting faster so that when I start doing these tempo runs at 542 a mile, they start feeling easier um, because at the minute, a 542 tempo run is not gonna feel easy. And then the second thing I need to improve is, is my quad strength. I need to somehow work out why they are tiring. And maybe it's my posterior chain that needs to be improved, or maybe it's the quad strength themselves. But I do need to get to the bottom of that and find a solution. It didn't impact me on this one, but if given that it seems to be the first thing to go every time, I need to fix it. So that's what I need to find a solution for. So what's next? Well, firstly, I'm gonna recover. Uh, so I'm gonna enjoy a week of doing almost nothing. I'll do some cycling on the bike. I'll probably get in the ice bath um, and I'll make sure that I get some heat on my legs just to make sure I'm fully recovered. And then I'm gonna get some speed in my legs. I'm gonna get mile reps, I'm gonna get 1K reps, but I'm gonna have fewer of them and I'm gonna have a longer time to recover between them because I wanna get them fast. And I've got a few races coming up. I've got some 10Ks, I've got some half marathons, and I've also got a world record attempt that's gonna be coming. There's a group of us who are gonna be running a world record attempt for charity, so stick around for that. So that's the next sort of few weeks, and when I've got that block out of the way, I'm gonna start the training block for the next marathon. And at the minute, I'm thinking the next marathon is gonna be Sydney. The reason being, it is the world age group marathon, uh, and so it'd be good to line myself up against some other old guys and see how I fare. It, apparently it's not the fastest course, so it may not be the course where I go sub 2.30, but I'm gonna give everything to have a good performance in Sydney and then um, see where we go from there. So I'm in the front corral, I've qualified for the front corral with sub 2.40. So that's Cover, the plan. Get fast, get training, go and operate in Sydney. So thanks for watching. Please stick around. It's going to be a fun ride to get to Sydney. Please subscribe if uh, you haven't yet and I'll see you on the next one.